Hello everyone, we're back here in Second Life and we are going to take a trip to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum here. It's one of the memorials that you can find in the destination guide. And I figured we should probably take a look at this. What we're going to be looking at here will be the Night of Broken Glass, the November 1938 pogroms. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce this word. Kristinok? I'm not sure exactly, unfortunately. Here we have a map. The dots represent select cities where synagogues were destroyed because of map scale. Not all cities affected by the night of broken glass can be shown or labeled. That's quite a number of dots. That's quite a number of dots. While we're going on our tour here, I'll be reading out the note cards that we get. Prelude to Destruction. The pretext for the violent programs of the Night of Broken Glass was the November 7 assassination of a German diplomat in Paris, Ernst von Roth, by Herschel Grinzepan, a Jewish teenager whose parents, along with 17,000 other Polish Jews, had been recently expelled from the Reich, initially denied entry into their native Poland, Grzyspan's parents and the other expelled Polish Jews found themselves stranded in a refugee camp near the town of Zabazin. That's the, that's the only bad thing is I have no idea how to pronounce uh, German words. In the border region be between Poland and Germany, though the Nazis portrayed the pogroms as spontaneous outbursts of pub popular outrage, they were calculated acts of retaliation carried out by the SA, SS, and local Nazi party organizations. A portion of Herschel Grisopan taken after his arrest by the French authorities. These are things that are on the board here. I'll take a look at it in a second. Jews of Polish nationality who have been expelled from Germany to the Polish border of town of Zezeben. Uh, a Jewish woman who has been expelled from Germany washes her clothes in the Zezeben refugee camp. As you can see, we can see the pictures here. Uh, Kristinok, Night of Broken Glass. Kristinok refers to the wave of violent anti-Jewish pogro pogroms which took place on November 9 and 10, 1938 throughout Germany annexed Austria and areas of Sudetian land in Slovakia, recently occupied by German troops. Encouraged by Nazi regimen, rioters burned or destroyed 267 synagogues, vandalized or, or looted uh, 7,500 Jewish businesses, killed at least 91 Jewish people. They also damaged many Jewish cemeteries, hospitals, schools, and homes as police and fire brigades stood aside. Kristinok, or Kristinite, or Night of Broken Glass, which I'll probably call it that, owes its name to the shards of shattered glass that lined German streets in the wake of the pogrom. Broken glass from the windows of synagogues, homes, and Jewish-owned businesses plundered and destroyed during the violence. It was a turning point in history. The pogroms marked an intensification of Nazi anti-Jewish policy that would accumulate in the Holocaust, the systematic state-sponsored murder of the Jews. View destroyed the interior of the Hakagen Synagogue the day of Crystal Night. View of the old synagogue in Aachen after its destruction on Crystal Night. Australian police stand guard in front of a Jewish-owned business that has been destroyed. And we can see various pictures here. Yep, 
Here's the last one in the room. After Christonaut. During and after Christonaut, for the first time, Jews were arrested on a massive scale and transported to Nazi concentration camps. About 30,000 Jews were sent to Buchenwald, Dachau, and Sachsen Hausen, where hundreds died within weeks of arrival. Release came only after the prisoners arranged to immigrate and agreed to transfer their properties to Orion, Orion's uh, refugees from Germany. However, faced immense difficulties, Nazi policies had systematized dispossessed Jews of much of their wealth, and few countries were willing to accept large numbers of impoverished immigrants. Christian Knight accumulated the escalating violence against Jews that began during the incorporation of Austria into the Reich in March of 1938. It also signaled the t fateful transfer of responsibility from solving the Jewish question to the SS. Newly arrived prisoners still in their civilian clothes, and after shaving disaffected stand on roll call in Buchenwald concentration camp, shortly after Christa night. Uniform prisoners of triangular badges are assembled during or assembled under Nazi guard at the Sakahazen concentration camp. Prisoners at roll call in Buckingham concentration camps. So these all appear to be pictures of concentration camps. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the, especially the upper top one up there, looks like it's not very, uh, it's kind of hard to make out. I don't know if it's because everything's kind of white along the wall here, or, I don't know. Alright, now we have to cl click this uh, folder to continue. As you leave through the accounts of eyewitnesses, your mind takes back to that night, and you begin to reconstruct the events of Krista Knight through their stories. So what we're going to come up against here is a uh, replica of the events of the Night of Broken Glass. And you can already start to see some um, uh, graffiti here. The one up here, Juden Raz, says Jews is a translation of Jews get out. Uh, there's the swastika. Another swastika. I uh, can't do anything with this building. I'll try and get everything that's here, but if I miss something, uh, that's unfortunate, but... During Christa night, Nazi stormtroopers smashed Jewish stored windows, destroying goods and carried out massive looting. The Nazis forced Jews to pay the cost of the violence perpetrated against them and banned Jews from gainful iconic economic activity. Okay, I guess I can't get a translation for that. Graffiti. Nothing for this building. Here's a bit of graffiti right here. You Jewish pigs. And of course there's a picture of a pig. Is in Dachau. In the aftermath of Crystal Night, more than 10,000 Jewish men were interned in Dachau first concentration camp founded by the Nazi government. Take a look in here. In some of these houses, we'll be able to find genuine documents. Hedy Pazitzer's passport dating December 10, 1938, in Venega. Forced to leave their parents behind in Venega, Heidi and her sister fled Nazi Germany to the United States. Upon their arrival in New York on January 
25, 1939, Heidi learned of her father's death in Dachau. Affidati submitted by Bert Clapper to support the application of his cousins Arthur, Joanna, Heinz, Lewy for immigration visas to the United States. The Aphrodite bears the stamp of the American Consulate General in Berlin and is dated night, December 31st, thir- 1938. Inside pages of Caroline first German passport, which includes her immigration visa, dated January 11, 1939, a passport control stamp of January 27, 1939. The reserve side of an immigrate, immigrant identification card issued to Bertha Salia Goldsmith at the U.S. Consulate in Stuttgart, February 6, 1940. I believe that's the last one. The hiding place. Soon after Christianite, Susan's father arranged to smuggle her and her brother Joseph into France. Susan and Joseph appear in the center of this photograph. After Nazis came to power, Susan was forced to leave the public school along with the other Jewish children. Even walking on the streets could be dangerous because of the neighborhood children often threw rocks at her. On November 9, 10, 1938, Christianite, Nazi thugs smashed the windows and furnishings of the Hesenoth home. Months later, Susan and her brother Joseph were smuggled into France. The Hills and Rolfs lived in Bad Nudzak, Noznak. Susan was the eldest of three children. Her father owned a thriving linen store, and her mother took care of Susan and her two brothers. After the Nazis came to power, the Hizlerafs, like other Jewish families, began to feel the effects of increased anti-Semitism. Susan Worsinger is one of the vo- voices heard in this experience. We'll go on that one last. I've never gotten this uh, thing right in the center here to uh, res up properly, so unfortunately I don't think we'll get a close-up of this. Basically, it's showing front pages of the Nazi publications with an anti-Semitic character depending the Jew as a traitor. Can I not get this to go? Come on. That's unfortunate. Alright, I know there's at least one more building that I haven't gone into. I've been in that one. Okay, there's a couple buildings. Aerialization of businesses. After Christianite, the German government issued dozens of anti-Jewish laws and decrees designed to deprive Jews of their property and of the means to learn livelihood. In addition, these regulations served to exclude Jews from any sort of public, social, or economic life. Businesses owned by Jews were not allowed to reopen unless they were managed by non-Jews. Jews were forbidden to practice most professions, required to sell their valuables to state purchasing offices, and subject to special taxation. Jewish ownership of automobiles was prohibited. Jews' licenses were withdrawn and access to public transportation was greatly limited. Jews could no longer visit places of public entertainment to attend theater performances, concerts, and movies. Even curfews were placed on Jews, limiting the hours of the day they could leave their homes. Front page of a Nazi publication, Der Sturmer. With an anti-Semitic caricature of Herschel Gizepan, the Jewish assassination—I mean, Jewish assassin of Ernest von Roth, 
Headline reads, is the Jewish question solved? Retributive measures against the Jews, the world historic task of Germany, the struggle continues. That is a lot of chairs. Appears to be a skull here. Uh oh. I think I'm supposed to stand on these marks on the ground, but I'm not exactly sure. Jewish children expelled from German public schools. After Christianite, life was extremely difficult for German and Australian Jewish children and teenagers. Already barred from entering museums, public playgrounds, and swimming pools, now Jewish schools were closed, and those Jewish children still attending pub German public schools were expelled. Jewish youngsters, like their parents, were totally segregated in Germany. In despair, many Jewish adults committed suicide. Most families tried desperately to leave Germany. Group portrait of pupils in the 7th grade at a Jewish school in Kazerun, uh, Germany, along those pictured is the teacher, Matt Odenzoser. After the banning of Jewish children from public schools, the school was founded on one floor of a school for mentally handicapped children and forbidden from mixing with the non-Jews on campus. After Christianite, the school was forced to move into a Jewish community building in the Kronstadtras next door to the destroyed synagogue. A class of students in Venia, Heidi Pulitzer, is the front row, third from the left. Gerg Zegwernick studies outside the Rosenberg Jewish Children's Seminary shortly before it was closed down in Christianite, 1938. Student transcript issued by the Oberizkwal? I, I don't even know where to begin to pronounce that. In Bremen to Gerd Zickruck. Prior to his leaving Germany, the document includes a Nazi seal on the bottom. The stamp on the upper left hand corner indicates the next the indicates the new name given the school by the Nazis. First grade pupils study in a classroom in a public school in Hamburg. Graduating class of the Wetzelberg Jewish Teachers Semin Seminary shortly before it was closed down in Kristinat. Pictured in the middle row on the far right is Gerg Zickerich. Document stating that Gerd Zwinnikich committed his studies at the Wesenberg Jewish Teachers Seminary. Um, and here we see various pictures here. That one doesn't want to... Okay, there we go. Huh, this isn't doing anything. That's odd. Okay, then. Oh, document certifying that Gerd Zinowick completed studies at the Wunzenberg Jewish Teachers Seminary. And we can see it here. Am I missing anything else besides... I thought there was one more building. Oh, I think this might be it, actually. Okay. Sarah Berg poses with her nieces, Engen Gersela Berg, on the family farm. After Christianite, the family hid in Kaling, Germany. Ing and... Gisela's father, brother, and cousin soon fled to Holland, 
but were imprisoned upon arrival for illegal entry. Three Jewish children posed outside on their family farm prior to the immigration from Germany. Pictured at are Grissel Berg, her sister Inn, and their cousin Harvey Meyer. Grissel describes the destruction of their home during Christmas night. It was so dreadful, whatever they didn't steal, they had to destroy. Our baby pictures were hanging on the walls, were stabbed with scissors. The glass broke and the scissors jabbed into the baby pictures, and that just... That told us something. I think these aren't resed up well enough. Let me see if I can... Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be wanting to work correctly now, as I noticed that I was beginning to... Okay, there we go. Zelma Zanowick, mother of Jared Jacob Zanowick, was one of five Jews in Bremen who were killed during Christianite. She was shot by SA stormtroopers when she refused to reveal the whereabouts of her husband. In all, at least 91 Jews were murdered in the course of the Christianite pogrom. Learn more about Zelma Zanowick in the police station, which we were there already. Here's her picture. It appears just one more thing here. Jews' homes were ransacked and looted. SA and Hitler Leaf units throughout Germany and annexed territories engaged in the destruction of Jewish owned homes and businesses. Members of many units wore civilian clothes to support the fiction that the disturbances were expressions of outraged public reaction. The program proved especially destructive in Berlin and Venina. Venina home to the two largest Jewish communities in the German Reich. Mobs of SA men roamed the streets attacking Jews in their homes and forcing Jews they encountered to perform acts of public humiliation. Although murder did not figure into the central directives, Christianite claimed the lives of at least 91 Jews between 9 and 10 November. Police records of the period document a high number of rapes and of suicides in the aftermath of the violence. Okay, there. I thought I was stuck for a second. Studio portrait of the Zenowick family from light, left to right are Zemek, Selma Zenowick holding her daughter light, Liesel, Benno, Joseph Zenowick, and, and Jared. Selma Zenowick was one of five Jews in Bremen who were killed during Christa night. She was shot by SA troopers when she refused to reveal the whereabouts of her husband. Sisters Gazilla and Ingberg Berg, uh, sit together at the dining room table in their parents' farmhouse after hearing about the family's plans to immigrate from Germany. The family fled to Kenya in May of 1939 before immigrating to the U.S. eight years later. Well, that's not good. Okay. Here we can see various propaganda here. This podium actually uh, decided to rise up properly. Unfortunately, I have no idea what this says. I'm pretty sure the Der Jude would probably be the Jew. Okay, now I understand. It's because I'm caught up in uh, lagging a little bit, so the stuff's not coming right away. An anti-Semitic poster entitled, Behind the Enemy Powers, The Jew.
front page of the Nazi publication Der Sturmer of an anti-Semitic character depicting Herschel Gizepan as the crucifier of Ernest von Roth. Is this perhaps the same podium that was there over there? Or is this a different one? I'm not sure. Anti-Jewish poster accusing Pacific residents of the town of Saw of being traitors to the folk for dealings with Jews. The poster reads, whoever goes to Jews is a traitor to the German people. Followed by a list of dozen names. The text concludes with German men, German women. Think about who, what you owe the German people. Did we miss something on the way in? Yes, we did. Okay. The Torah scroll, Hebel Sefer Torah, or Sefri Torah, plural, is the holiest text within Judaism and is venerated by Jews of the Word of God. Torahs contain the five books of Moses, which in English are Genesis, Exodus, Levitus, Levitus Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I, I have problems saying some words. Determinami. During Christianity, Torah scrolls were desecrated throughout Germany. After seizing the archives and valuables, Nazis destroyed the interiors of synagogues and desecrated religious objects such as prayer books. As you can see, we can see the damage. It looks like it was burned, actually. The Torahs are all over the floor. The, uh, the, the benches are broken or moved around. Synagogues occupy a central place in Jewish religious and communal life. In the months before Christianite, synagogues in Munich, Neumannberg, Dortmund, and Kaiser Slotten Slaughtern were demolished on the orders of local Nazi party officials. In other German towns, anti-Jewish vandalism was common. On the night of November 9, 1938, however, the violence became nationwide. After seizing the archives and valuables, Nazis destroyed the interiors of synagogues and desecrated religious objects. Whenever possible, the assailants tried to set the buildings ablaze while firemen protected nearby Ar Aaron property. Hundreds of synagogues all over Germany, including Austria, were vandalized, looted, and destroyed. Okay. I believe there is something else up here. The damaged linen above a Torah, Torah Ark from a synagogue in Niederhausen, Germany that was destroyed during Crystal Night. The partially damaged Hebrew verse on the linen reads, Know before whom you stand. When they are not being used during services, the Torah scrolls are stored in the holiest spot within a synagogue. The Holy Ark, Hebrew Aaron Kaddish, which is usually an orient curtained off ca cabinet or a section of the synagogue built along the wall that most closely faces Jer Jerusalem, the direction Jews face when engaged in prayer. And now we're back in the... Okay. That was kind of odd, but okay. Here are various pictures of uh, people that were mentioned in the in the area we were just in. The replica of the Knight of Broken Glass. I was trying to think of what word I was looking for. I, I was going to say reenactment, but that wasn't quite what I was going for.
these are listing the photos that that were used to make the replica that we just saw. You can see various pieces of stuff here, such as the broken windows, the ransacked home. The graffiti. Here you're able to leave a note of a memory reporting wall if you so wish after you've gone through this. So if you wish to come through here, you can leave your thoughts. We appear to be nearing the end of this. You are my witnesses, Isaiah 43.1. Here's where you'd be able to read testimony video. Here, I mean, not read, but watch testimony videos. I, I can't watch these at the moment because I don't have my uh, my um, media working correctly. But um, if you wish to come here and watch these, that'd be very great. And if you wish to learn more about the the Crystal Knight, or the Holocaust, or a genocide overall today, you can visit the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum website. Which... You can also get a t-shirt for free. That's not rezzed up properly. You can also make a donation. From their website. Uh, and that appears to be about it for this place. I hope you enjoyed this... Well, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of the replica of the Night of Broken Glass. It was a very uh, historical memorial. And I will see you guys next time.